Hi there, I built this in a previous video. The idea being it has an electric motor, which with a pulley on the end and a large pulley here and a screw thread. So as the motor goes round, turns the pulleys, moves the screw thread. At the end I've put this sort of toggle switch, which changes it so that when it's switched on, if we can switch it on, then the thing moves, the switch at the end toggles, and it goes backwards and forwards on, I don't know if you can see this, so it's working on two volts at the moment. This is all part of a problem that I've been looking at, and with this, I think I was dead lucky that it actually works. The only reason I think now that it works is because these two arms here, which are just bent paper clips and push against this bit of circuit board, they stop the circuit board from moving until there's quite a large force on it, so it stays in the correct position even though it's been pulled by the elastic band down here. And this is what I call the dead zone. So this misses the dead zone, I think, now, because these push against the circuit board and stop it moving. So I think that's the only reason that that works. Just pure luck. If I show what I think the problem is, if I have a look at a couple of metres, put them both on ohms, 200 ohms, is that 200? Yeah. And I have here a switch, a changeover switch of the type that I could put on the end. Now this, at the moment, hopefully we can see that the switch is at one side and this meter is on a low reading. If I switch it to the other side, this goes to a high reading and that one goes to a low reading. So depending which side it's on, depends which two probes are shorted together. So I've got my two earths on the middle, one metre on one side and the other metre on the other side. But this switch actually is very difficult to move. I don't think I could move it with the small motors I'm using. And also if I do it very slowly... I can show what the problem is if I do it very slowly. There, I've got my problem. Neither meter is connected. So if a motor was driving this through this switch, it will be switched off now because there is no circuit to it from either side of the switch. Switches have got to do this because it's got to be what they say, break before make. It's got to stop from one side before it gets to the other side. This, of course, is easily overcome if we use a great big motor with a great deal of power in it and it throws the switch. But if it's going slow, that's when the problem starts. Starts. Can I get it there again, yeah? That problem there, the motor stopped and that's it. So that's the problem I've been dealing with for, well, I reckon 50 years or more. And I thought that the toggle switch did it, but I'm not convinced that I, it wasn't just luck. But while looking on the internet afterwards, I came across this. It's a Lego gearbox. It's a beautiful thing. It's made by JK Brickworks. You can find them on YouTube. He's got lots of brilliant Lego things on there. But this is a gearbox, a reversing gearbox that just goes in circles or half circle. It doesn't act, it isn't a linear one like I'm trying to build. And what it has, it has a gear at this end driven by a motor with a small pinion on it and this white lever here which moves, goes down and across the bottom and over here we have a Lego switch. 
The Lego switch has no connection on the top, but it has down in the middle a shaft coming out, I believe, which comes up and then comes up to this black lump of Lego here with this arm coming out. And when this white arm goes down and across the bottom, then this black lump comes across and as it comes across, it brings the switch with it. So it goes in the opposite direction. Brilliant thing, but it goes even further. It doesn't actually move the right amount for what he wants it to do. So he's put in what he calls blockers. So here, this little red piece stops the switch from going across. But that red piece is controlled by this wheel here, which is on this white arm that we saw at the beginning here that is connected to that gear. And that white arm then comes along, lifts this wheel up, and as it lifts it up, it releases the switch and the switch is pulled across by the elastic band. So that deals with it at one side. He has another blocker arm at the other side. This part here then stops the switch coming this way to the right as it is there. And that blocker is controlled by this orange piece here, which is controlled again when the white arm comes across. So he has these things called blockers. And when I saw that, I thought, yeah, that's what I need. I need blockers. Things that will stop it switch operating until there's enough tension to drag it across. So yeah, it seemed a brilliant idea. Now I'd already built this some time ago. It's absolutely massive I think compared to that one this one is dinky and lovely this is big and bumbly but nevertheless it seems to work so I got my two blockers there's one blocker there's the other blocker I have again a small pulley on a, the motor larger pulley on the end of the threaded shaft the studding as I believe it's called And so that comes across, it has a nut on it here. That nut then connects onto this piece of brass tubing, which slides up and down on this red rod. The red rod also has on it two connectors to the motor and three bands, copper bands. The middle copper band is negative, this positive and this positive. So at the moment, this copper band, this arm is negative. This arm is positive. So the motor goes in one direction. When the rod slides across, it goes the other way. This one at this side, the bottom one now becomes positive. The middle one becomes negative and the motor goes in the opposite direction. Got a couple of bolts in here so that the plastic can't go too far and so it can't rotate I've just connected a little bit of brass tubing over the screw thread uh, that comes through and that stops the plastic rod from rotating so that's what I built so let's try it I'm using yellow Connector. I'm putting what have I lost? I've lost my switch. Connect my switch on. How does my switch connect on? Doesn't really matter as long as as long as what reds to red. So positive's got to go to positive because if it's connected the wrong way around, then it doesn't work because it goes in the wrong direction. So if we try it then, switch it on comes across beautifully, catches on the rod and stops. If I push the rod across, push the rod across and it goes back the other way and pushes on the spring and stops. 
because the switch is in its dead spot. It just takes it into the dead spot and no further. So it just needs that little nudge to take it that little bit further. So what about the blockers? Well, all the blocker is is a lump of plastic that sits between the end stop and the end and that then goes into there and if I push that away then when it comes to this end this drops in and this little arm here lifts it up still doesn't work at this end because because what because my blocker didn't go into place now my blockers going into place the little arm comes across lifts up the blocker and it goes backwards and forwards with no dead spot so it's moved it across here and then it's moved it across back again so that thanks to the Lego model Mr what was it TK JK Brickworks has enabled me to work out how to put blockers in and these little blockers then stop they switch changing too soon and therefore it keeps going just on 2 volts and I'm using 304 well 400 milliamps Ooh, 560 then so it takes a lot of milliamps at the end but it does keep going and it actually works going backwards and forwards lifting the blockers up at the end so the spring comes across presses on the end that's stopped by the blocker then the block is lifted so the spring can go. Yes, I do like that. Total waste of time, of course. Although I could build it into some model or other. Ah, better leave it. Bye now. Bye.